So welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number one from the June 2023 Pure Mathematics P2 um, exam from um, Pearson's in Excel, International A-Level. So this question here is question number one, which is about the trapezium rule. So um, as I've mentioned many times, when I go through these papers, I don't just like read out the mark scheme. I try to explain what's behind um, the topic so people understand. And I try and look at some of the common mistakes that people make. Now, here we have um, a equation of a curve. The equation is not given. Y equals f of x. Okay, we don't know what the equation is. But we're given some coordinates of some points on the curve. So we got f the, you know, when x is 4, y is 9.2, x is 4.2, y is 8.4556, and so on. And you can see the x values are increasing in equal intervals of 0.2. All right. So if we were to, for example, make a little sketch. Now, you don't have to do this. This is a very easy question, but I'm just making sure that we all understand what's actually behind what I'm going to explain. So if you make a little sketch of this, um, which of course, as I mentioned, we don't have to do in the exam, of course, um, you know, you're going to have four, 9.2 and four, eight. And as you can see, it goes down and it goes up again. So like there's four and say there's five. And then it's like you have these equal intervals of 0.2. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's 4.2, 4.4, 4 4.6, okay, 4.8 and 5. So it's going to go, it's like 9.2, then it goes down to 8.46, then it goes down to 3.8512, then it goes up again, and it goes up again, and it goes up again. So you've got something that looks like this. So what they want to do is, they want to find, they want us to find the integral or to estimate the integral okay um of this function between four and five which is the same as finding the area under this curve or between this curve and the x-axis between x equals four and x equals five so we want to find this whole area here that's what you do when you integrate between these limits now of course we can't integrate because we don't have um the equation of the curve and plus they've told us as well to use a trapezium Right. So even if they did, they're asking us to find the, use the trapezium rule. So the trapezium rule works in the following way. Basically, what we do is we split up um, this area into a series of equally spaced trapeziums. Okay, that's what we're doing here. Now, they don't look that equally spaced because I haven't drawn it so well. All right, but they're supposed to be equal widths. All right, as you can see, each of them is 0.2 if I drew it properly. All right, so these represents the x coordinates and the length of this line, for example, here is 9.2. And the length of this line is 8.4556. That's this point, the y-axis, so it's that, that high. And so on, so all of these points, their heights, the vertical heights are these values over here. Okay, so we can see here, we what we're going to do is we're going to approximate these as small little trapeziums um, by basically we're just joining these together and it kind of approximates it's not going to give us the exact area as you can see there's some kind of difference differences here if you if you really um, zoom in but they give a pretty decent approximation if i find the area of this trapezium and this trapezium and this trapezium and that trapezium and that trapezium add them together it should give us an approximate value for the area of this um, you know, area under the curve. All right. So how does the trapezium rule work? Well, what we do is we think about the area of this first trapezium. I'm going to call this here y1 and this y2 and this y3 and this y4 and this y5 and this y6. Okay. And we can see that the area of this first trapezium here trapezium 1, trapezium 2, trapezium 3, trapezium 4, and trapezium 5. The area of the first trapezium is going to be given by, and we know the area of a trapezium is given by the um, sum of the parallel sides divided by 2 times um, the height. 
you can say the height, sometimes you say height over two times the sum of the parallel sides, same thing, right? So what is the height of the trapezium? Well, it's not the vertical height, it's the distance between the parallel sides. The height of a trapezium is defined as the distance between its parallel sides, and these vertical lines are the parallel sides, so the height is actually this distance here, 0 0.2. So the height is 0 0.2, right? Now, some people, they get um, confused between um, or when they when they uh, finding the height of the trapezium they use this formula b minus a over n okay so they take the last value and the first value so they do five minus four and then their mistake is is they take n as a number of x values when it's not n is the number of trapeziums okay which is as you can see there's five trapeziums and there's six x values, right? Because the trapeziums, these one trapezium is made up of two lines. So we have here, altogether, five trapeziums made up of six lines. There's always one more line than the number of trapeziums, right? So n is not six, it's actually five. That's why the gap is 0 0.2, h is 0 0.2. We don't have to actually calculate that because we already know, we can see the gaps are 0 0.2 from the x values. So don't be using this formula when you don't need to use it. You can see that the if you're already told uh, the table, you know the whole table here, you know the, the gaps between the x values are, that is h basically. That's the distance between these parallel sides. So that's a mistake that people make. Many people would put 5 minus 4 over 6 and they would get the value of h wrong. That's a very, very common mistake with the trapezium rule. Okay, so the area of that first trapezium would be you know, that distance between the parallel sides over 2 times the sum of the parallel sides would be y1 plus y2. And the area of the second trapezium would be the same h over 2, but this time it would be y2 plus y3. Okay, and the third trapezium, it will be y3 plus y4. So if you were to look at this a bit more carefully, h over 2 would be a common factor of each of those terms. You follow that pattern. But then you'll have uh, y1 plus y2. But then you'll have another y2 from here. And then you'll have another y3 from here because you'll have, you know, uh, for this one it will be uh, h over 2 times um, y3 plus y4. So you'll have another y3 and another y3 and so on. You'll have the same thing for y4 and another y4. And the same thing for y5, the only ones which will only be written once are the first height here and the last height. So y1 and y6, this, this value and this value will be written once, but these values are going to be written twice in our formula. All right. So the area, or we can say the integral between 4 and 5 of f of, f of x is going to be given by 0.2 over 2, h over 2, times the first and the last are going to be written one time, so 9.2 plus 8.6, and all the others are going to be multiplied by 2. So you have 2 times 8.4556 plus 3.8512 plus 5.0342 plus 7.8297. And that's going to give you your, your answer. So you have to be very careful when you are um, putting this in your calculator because it's very easy to make a mistake. So we have um, 0 0.2 divided by 2, which would be 0 0.1, times, and then I'm going to add these together. So I have 9.2 plus 8.6, okay, plus 2 times, then I'll put in brackets, all of these. So I'll read it from here, so in case I wrote it down a bit messy. So 8.44556, just make sure you did it correctly, plus 3.8512, plus 5.0342, 5.0342, plus 7.8297, Nine seven, and then that's it. We've already we've already written down that. So close that bracket and the first bracket, and then we press equals, and we get six point eight one four one four, six point eight one four one four.
So now we have to round the answer as required in the question. And as we can see, it tells us to round to three decimal places. So the third, third decimal place stops here. So you're going to have 6.814. That's the answer. Be careful not to write three significant figures by mistake. That would be 6.181. This is three decimal places. So 6.814. And that gives you the three marks for this question. Quite a simple question, okay, to start off this paper. Um, and normally in this type of trapezium rule question, they would normally give you a part B where you have to then, you know, use your answer to part A to do something else, which is related to part A. But in this case, it's just a very straightforward trapezium rule question. Now, some of you might be asking why this video is so long and it's only three marks. As as I said, this uh, this question can be answered in a matter of seconds really okay but i like to go through the background explain where topics um, are founded from you know what, what's the basis behind them for those people who just you know want to understand instead of just memorizing what to do and for those people maybe who haven't um you know they're homeschooled wherever they don't have haven't been taught um you know in a way where they can understand properly that will you know that that's the reason why i try to go through these in a bit more detail to help those type of students um, so please bear with me. I'm not just going to be a talking mark scheme. I just, you know, copy the mark scheme and just write it down. No, I want to explain things in a bit more detail and especially common mistakes, people where, you know, people uh, trip up and so on. All right. So that concludes question number one. Other questions from this particular paper, June 2023, Pure Mathematics P2 from the International A-Level Edexcel, Edexcel sorry, can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from... Um, or related to the trapezium rule from the P2 can be found in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video which the link will appear over here which will show you how to use my channel in an efficient manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.